Hey guys, what's going on? It's Majin Bay. I'm here on behalf of Mastery and Terra to talk to you about some of the decks that I expect to see a lot of uh, and that I think will be very impactful for the last chance qualifier meta. Um, starting off the list right away with um, Jax Orn, a deck that kind of needs no introduction, but I'm going to give one to you anyway. Uh, a dual format all-star, very, very powerful in both standard and eternal. I expect to see a lot of this, and I think, I think you should too. Um, any deck that people have a lot of reps on uh usually you end up seeing a lot as like a third deck slot you know they have their their dual deck and they're like i want something that's just kind of good and i think Jax orn has filled that spot for a while and is going to continue to fill that spot especially since a lot of competitive players are coming off of the last eternal open and they're going to be very accustomed to Jax orn i think it's you know it's good as standard too i think we'll see a lot of people play it it's a very strong strategy uh, centered around, obviously, the improvised weapons, and it can just kind of run people over. Jax is an incredible unit. Fish Fight is an incredible spell, and Sky Splitter is probably the best combat trick we have available in Standard. You mix that with easy access to the Explorers in Scarlet Pioneer, and a really, really, really good finisher in Orn, and it's just a strong deck. Um, it does have its weak spots. It can get beaten up by things that go under it, like elusives, and things that go over it, like control. But very, very strong deck. I expect to see a lot of it. So if you're building your lineup, probably start with Jaxorn in mind, whether you're bringing it or whether you're trying to build a plan against whatever your opponent could bring. Next up on the mid-range list is Garen Jarvan Galio. Uh, this is just formidable's mid-range, Demacia Freljord which saw a huge uptick in play during the world qualifiers uh, and now has dropped off quite a bit uh, now that standard season has kind of come and matured a little bit. However, I still think the deck is very, very good and I think it's a bit underrepresented compared to its power level. Perhaps some of its counters have kind of come out to play a little bit more because it was the big bad boogeyman during the world championship, uh, the world's qualifier open but it's still very, very good. And in a format where you get to ban things, a deck like this is very strong because what it does is it bullies other mid-range decks. It's really good into anything that tries to play on the same like plane as it, which is basically just trying to play units on curve and run your opponent over. This, uh, this deck's units are bigger, its combat spells are better, and things like Gar uh, <laughs> Garvin, Jarvin, Galio, the Garen board buff, right? Champion strength the Annika um, at the end game, like all of this stuff just makes it so it's really, really hard to keep up with your average min range deck. Just an incredibly efficient deck, incredibly powerful. Again, if you're looking out for like, oh, what are my opponents going to be playing? What decks should I expect to see? I expect to see a lot of Jax Horn and I expect to see a lot of this formidable deck. Those are probably my top two, like most broad decks. Um, now to kind of change it up a little bit, we have another mid-range deck, but a bit different one. This is Shen Jarvan. Again, Jarvan showing up once more. Very, very powerful champion in the current standard format. This deck is similar to the others in that it's a board-based mid-range deck, but a bit different in that it's out to hunt other board-based mid-range decks. Barrier is basically the ultimate Demacia trump card. Uh, if you've played a lot of Demacia Mirrors, you know that something coming down with Barrier basically completely neuters your attack. And Shen Jarvan gives things Barriers over and over and over and over again. <coughs> letting them attack with impunity and not allowing you to get any kind of meaningful tempo on your turns if you want to develop. Which these board-based decks really do want to do. Especially like, let's say you play your, you know, you have a unit and you play your Balin. They have a Kinku student, and once you play Balin, they respond with Shen. And now, what are you going to do? How do you attack into that, right? Both their units have barrier. There's nothing you can do. You just have to send the turn back. That happens once or twice, and all of a sudden, the game's just out of reach for you. And that's what Shen Jarvan hopes to do. However, Shen Jarvan has a couple issues. One, uh, it can just not draw Shen. And when the deck doesn't draw Shen, it has a bunch of mm, kind of lackluster pieces. Bright Steel Protector, not really like up to snuff anymore. Uh, Green Glade Caretaker literally has no text unless you're giving things barrier, right? Like, the units are okay, but they're not super great on their own. It really takes things like Shen or Jarvan to push them over the top. That being said, it is still a very powerful deck, and people seem to like it. It gets played a lot, uh, so I would expect to see quite a bit of it as well. 
moving away from the kind of board based strategy that we've been looking at so far is something that uh, didn't even pop up until after the world qualifiers. And this is Timo Kale. Now I'm using this not only to show the Timo Kale deck, but also just to show more linear decks. Um, this would be something like elusives, right? You have the Fizz Yumi deck, you have the Timo Yumi deck, right? That focuses more on burn. The Fizz Yumi deck focuses more on pump spells. This focuses, focuses more on just going wide, buffing your stuff up with Kale, uh, Yordle Captain, all that kind of stuff, and then laying down a really big difficult to deal with Zelani. I expect these linear strategies to do quite well, actually. Uh, I think <coughs> people aren't very prepared for them. If you haven't been playing a lot of standard recently since the world qualifying open, um, these kind of came out of left field for you. I know if I was playing in the tournament, I would be not as comfortable going into them as I would be against the other mid-range decks because, like I said, they're a bit newer. Um, and I think you can get really caught off guard. I, I don't I don't think people are going to be as prepared for them. Sure, they have their bad matchups and everything, but they're very, very strong. The linear deck's quite, quite good. They also get under things like the Formidables deck, right? You can just run them over, especially Elusives. If they don't draw their blocking Badger Bear um, and you're playing the Elusives, like Timo Yumi list, you just kill them. Uh, the Fizz list can just kill them, right? You just go Fizz, Yumi, and there's basically nothing they can do except hope to draw their blocking Badger Bear or their Freezes. These kind of linear decks are very strong, so be prepared for them, right? The other axes of the format is control. We have a couple different control lists floating around. They seem to focus on either Shadow Isles Freljord uh, with War Mother's Call leading into these really big beefy units or a Heimer Nora like kind of board spammy list that I'm not showcasing here. Um, you can you can easily go find it on Master Runeterra, Runeterra.ar. There's there's plenty of lists out there. Um, it's been around for a while. But basically what these decks look to do is just say, hey, listen, I don't care about your little small ball mid-range stuff that you have. I don't care about your pump spells. I don't care about your barriers. He's, here's a she who wanders on turn six, right? Like that's what you're trying to do. It wins games. It's always wins games. There's a reason why you call it she who wins. So we have an interesting little triangle here. We have mid-range decks trying to out mid-range each other on one side. <coughs> We have the linear decks trying to go under the mid-range decks and under the control decks. And we have the control decks trying to go over the top of mid-range while not succumbing to the the really like low to the ground linear decks, which is honestly my favorite kind of format. I like these kind of like little triangle things. I think they're really fun. All of these have their own benefits. They're all really strong. Like I said, I expect to see probably the most of the mid-range decks that I showed in the beginning. I expect to see a lot of Jack Sworn. I expect to see a lot of Formidables. I expect to see a lot of Shen Jarman. And then these will be the decks that are more splashed. I don't think people are going to be sitting there like they play Shen Jarman. I don't, I don't think people are going to play something like Jack Sworn, Formidables, War Mother's Call, right? That usually doesn't happen. Usually, if people are on control, they're going to try to build a couple of control decks. If they're on um, you know, a linear list. They're going to try to build a couple more linear lists. There was a tournament just today, as I'm recording this, I believe, where some of the winning lists uh, had this Timo Kale deck and then like the the Fizz Yumi Freljord deck. Very strong linear list. You're going to try to like stack them and really just take people unawares. So keep that in mind. There's the linear decks you need to watch out for. There's the control decks you need to watch out for. And probably more than everything else, I think you need to be prepared for the mid-range decks. So that's what I got. That's my small little meta breakdown right before the last chance qualifier. Good luck, everybody. I'll see you next time.